What's happening everyone? Welcome back to another Advanced Algebra video where today we are going to begin the first part of solving systems of inequalities. So we did a lot with solving systems of equations, substitution, elimination, and graphing. Now we're going to look at how does that apply to solving systems of inequalities where you are going to have to graph a system of linear inequalities on a coordinate plane looking for what's called a feasible region. You're darn tootin' right, that's what we're gonna do. So, a couple of steps to maybe help you along that process. When we were doing this for systems of equations, we were looking for an ordered pair that worked in both equations, or maybe an ordered triple that worked in all three. The difference here is that with inequalities, as we've discovered, there's an infinite amount of answers. And so we need to find this region, this feasible region, that has all of the possible answers that will work. And so here's the steps. First, we're going to graph one of the linear equalities first. Pick which one you want to graph first. That doesn't matter, right? This is what we learned in lesson 5-7, graphing linear inequalities. Just remember which type of line are you going to use? Is it a solid or a dashed line? And then which type of shading, right? How are we going to determine by testing a point which side to shade? Step number two is to graph the second linear inequality following the same process. Which type of line are you going to use? And which region are you going to shade? Third, repeat that for any additional inequalities that you might have. A third, a fourth, a fifth one, right? We're just going to keep repeating one and two, if you will. The last step, number four, though, is this is that feasible region. We're going to find a shaded region that all of the inequalities have in common. The key word being all inequalities. They all have to share that region, right? We need an answer. Uh, a region that shows where all ordered pairs, all answers will work in every single inequality that we have. Let's take a look at what this is going to look like. So here's an example. Sketch the solution to this system. Y is greater than 4x minus 3. Y is greater than or equal to negative 2x plus 3. <clears throat> and so Step one, graph one of these. Doesn't matter which one, we're going to graph one of them. So uh, I'm going to choose this one to be in blue, and we're going to graph this one first. Y-intercept is negative 3. Slope is 4, or 4 over 1. So if we graph that, Y-intercept is negative 3. Down here at negative 3. Slope is 4 or 4 over 1, so a rise of 4, a run of 1. Rise of 4 and a run of 1. Before we connect them, we should figure out what type of line do we want. In this case, it's only an equal to bar, so it does need to be a dashed line. Now I'm going to change my line here, even though it's solid right now at the moment. We're just going to take an eraser and we're going to eliminate the solidness to it. Again, this just represents that any point on this line would not be a solution. It wouldn't work. Okay, wouldn't it? Wouldn't give us a true statement. Step number, or the second part of this, after we've created a dashed line, is to test a point. So easy for me, or, or easier, I should say, to test zero zero into this equation. Inequality zero greater than four times zero is zero minus three. 0 is greater than 0 minus 3 is negative 3. That is definitely a true statement. 0 is greater than negative 3. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we would have to shade the region. Now, I'm not going to like scribble all of this in. We, we certainly can, and that's what one of the Desmos activities next week will have us look at. But I'm just going to kind of slowly show you know, these arrows going this way, or these lines, to show that I should really shade anything above the blue line here. Anything above that blue line would be an acceptable answer for this top inequality. However, we've got to do this again for the bottom one, which let's do this bottom one in red. Y-intercept uh, 3, slope negative 2, or negative 2 over 1. So let's start by graphing the y-intercept up here at positive 3. So 1, 2, 3 right there. Slope of negative 2 means 2 units down and 1 unit to the right. 
two units down, one unit to the right, two units down, and so on. What type of line would we need to use in this red, the second inequality? It does have the equal to bar, so this one would indeed need to be a solid line. So we can kind of, you know, leave that line as solid. And then let's test a point. Now, again, what we have to try and imagine is that blue line isn't there right now. Right? Let's just imagine it's not there. And I'm, the, I'm only working with this red line, which means I'm going to test the point zero, zero again for the red. Zero is greater than or equal to negative two times zero is zero plus than the three. So zero is greater than or equal to three. That now yields a false statement. Right, zero is not greater than three. So for the red line, nothing underneath it, because that's where zero, zero would work. So we are only going to be, we would only need to be shading up above the red line. So we've got that. Okay, so step one, check. Graph the first one. Step two, check. We graph the second one. Step three, repeat. We don't have any more. So that's a check. Step four, find the shaded region that all inequalities have in common. So what this looks like, or maybe what this is saying, uh, right? Maybe if I type this out, it'll be easier to see what we're looking for. The blue line, we need to be above. Maybe you're looking at it as left of blue, of the blue line. And, right, it has to satisfy both. So, and we need to be above, or maybe some of you see that as to the right of the red line. Above or left of the blue line, and at the same time, it's got to be above or to the right of the green, which means if I grab a green pen to show the overlapping, is this region right in here. So this region, which I'm going to shade in green all the way down here to its intersection point, would be called our feasible region. Anything in this green region, if we were to select an ordered pair and check and plug them in, it would truly work in both inequalities here. So, for example, let's just pick a point just to go through this. Right there. 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's the point 1, 5 right there in the green region. If you plug that into both inequalities, five is greater than four minus three. Five is greater than four minus three, five is greater than one, check. Plug it in down here. Five is greater than or equal to negative two plus three. Right, negative two times one plus three, five is greater than one, that's check. So it works in both of them, which is why we're looking for that overlapped region. Now a second thing to consider, the red line is solid. The blue line over here is dashed. That means any point on this blue dashed line is not gonna work in the blue. It'll work in the red, but it won't work in the blue. Conversely, the red line being solid means any point here will work in red, and because it's to the left or above the blue line, it would also work in the blue, meaning any red, any point on this line over here in red would be a solution to both, whereas a point over here on the blue would not because it doesn't work in the blue. So again, a feasible region and graphing linear inequalities. One more example here where we, we try and graph the system and identify that feasible region. And then we talk about vertices. Where do these all connect? And this time we've got three to graph, okay? So three of them. Let's do the first one here in blue. Just put a star next to it, so blue. <clears throat> Excuse me, negative three. So y-intercept is at negative three, down three. Slope is four thirds for, for a rise and three for the run. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. All right, gotta ask ourselves, what kind of a line do we need? In this case, it is gonna be dashed. Um, I'm gonna just, again, get rid of that in a moment with the eraser, a little bit easier on this program. So again, dash, nothing on this line would work 
for the blue equation or the blue inequality. Okay, now we got a shade for that blue. We got a shade. Test the point zero zero is zero greater than zero minus three. Zero is greater than negative three. That is true. So we would have to be shading for the blue. If we were only doing the blue, it would be anything above this blue line. Anything above it. Okay. Now let's do the second inequality. Let's just pick red because that's what we've been working with. So here's red. Um, this one looks like it might be easier to use with x and y intercepts. So the x intercept for red, do it down here, is 6. The y intercept, 3y is 6. So that means y would have to be 2. So let's plot that. y would be 2. And x would be six. So what kind of a line do we have for the red one? We have the equal to bar. So it's definitely going to be a solid line. And then we've got to test a point again, right? We can still use zero, zero for the red line because it's not quite on it. Zero plus zero. Is that greater than or equal to six? That's false. So zero, zero is not part of the red solution, meaning I've got to go above the red line. I've got to have everything above. Now, I can kind of stop right here, right? Because if I start shading down here, I know that these answers down here don't work for the blue. So I'm just going to stop shading right there because I know I have to be above the blue and above the red. However, we've got one more inequality in this one. We've got y is less than 2. <clears throat> Excuse me. y has to be less than 2. So we've got to draw this line, y equals 2. That's the line we're drawing. But it needs to be dashed, right, because there's no equal to bar. So here's this line, y equals 2. Let's make it dashed. Let's just erase some of it. And we're looking for y is less than 2, right? Smaller. Again, you could test 0. Plug, plug in a 0. Is 0 less than 2? It certainly is. That's a check mark. It works. So everything below the green line would have to get filled in as an answer. So that means as we're looking for this feasible region, above red, above blue, but below green, and hopefully it's trying colored in in gold, you will see that it's this region right in here. But we got to be careful. I, I should have shaded that a little bit differently, right? The blue line was dashed. So if it's on this line, it does not work because it doesn't work for blue. And the green line up here was dashed, meaning anything on this line wouldn't work. So we're only looking at the shaded region plus this red line here, which means our last question, can we find the vertices? There are three of them. Right here is one vertice, one, two, three, comma, one. Right here is a vertice, zero, comma, two. And then we've got a vertice over here. I should circle these for us. My apologies. Four comma two. All right, so those are the vertices that define our feasible region, that defined the triangle. However, in this case, none of these are a solution. In this example, they are not solutions though. And the reason that that is the case again, okay, this point is on the blue line and it's dashed. So it doesn't work in the blue equation. This point up here is on the green and the blue. And both of those are dashed, which means it doesn't work in the green or the blue. And this point here, although it's on the red, it's on the green as well. And it would not work, but it helps us to define that feasible region. That's the introduction to what we're doing here with systems of inequalities. If you have any questions, please make sure that you reach out to your teacher. If not, uh, I hope you have a good weekend, and we'll catch you next time. Stay safe.